welcome um, all who are here to, to hear this breakout session. Uh, I'm Kathy Hedgecock and I'm with Second Harvest here in Spokane. We're, we're the local food bank here and we appreciate the opportunity to be part of this conference today. Um, I've been part of the fund development team at Second Harvest for 22 years. Second Harvest is the food bank for numerous partner food pantries, meal sites, and other hunger relief programs that serve 21 counties here in Eastern Washington, as well as five, as well as five counties in North Idaho. While we remain focused on our mission to get food to where it's needed, we do care a whole lot about supporting food system and policy changes that help break down food access barriers and improve food security for people facing hunger. As a member of Feeding America, we rely on their government's um, affairs team heavily to keep us aware of public policy updates at the national level. Here at home though, we're really proud of the strong relationship we've built over the years with our Feeding America peer that serves Western Washington and that's Food Lifeline. So today I'm happy to turn over the presentation um, to Aaron Shazeski. He's a Food Lifeline and you know, for a long time, we've really relied on his public policy and advocacy expertise to keep us in tune with legislative activities related to our shared interest in serving people facing hunger here in the state of Washington. So Aaron, I'll turn things over to you. Great, thank you so much, Kathy. And it is true, it is a wonderful partnership. And um, even though we're in different parts of the state, uh, when we work together and we're different organizations, but under one umbrella, it really feels like we're one organization. I'm really proud of that. And you know, it also means is that we can say confidently that uh, we, we really touch every community in the state and are working together to address important hunger needs. So a uh, lot to cover in this, this little piece here. I'm really excited about this and I've been thinking about it for a long time. And there's a number of things that just really suggest that this is an absolutely ideal uh, time for us to come together and, and talk about hunger relief policy, advocacy, and, and ways that we can work together. Um, and I'll explain just exactly you know, what I mean by that, but it's, uh, and I've been doing this I've been in hunger relief work for seven years and, 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 and really I can't think of a more pivotal moment than, than right now. I'm also really excited for the fact of, uh, you know, participating in, in the, the Fig Tree Conference and that is, um, I'm really interested and, and excited about your faith-based inspiration, you know, that, how you're organized and, and for this conference and for maybe, obvious reasons uh, in that, it, you know, you represent a large uh, constituency um, and you care about people, but also for the reason I was just thinking about this to myself and that is that faith really has no end in that, um, and, and it's just the kind of thing that we need, that kind of fortitude for a really long struggle. And I would say also that, um, that it assumes sort of uh, inherently that, you know, you come with a bias toward advocating for others or on behalf of others. And so um, in my work and advocacy, you know, those are very strong characteristics, very important characteristics and ones that are, are really required for the, the, I would say maybe somewhat difficult work that it is to influence public policy and affect change and and the world around us. It also helps that um, that you know I I understand that your you know your inspiration your uh, what motivates you is um, is is fully featured. You're not focused just on one issue, uh, but all of the concerns of the human condition, which I think is really important. And there is an awful lot of 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 hunger that intersects many other parts of, of people's lives. And so uh, there's a nice match there. Uh, maybe just to be a little bit about me and then I wanna just kind of be clear about the, the two key areas that I wanna uh, talk about with you today. And that is, uh, but first me, Aaron Chazaski, I'm the Director of Advocacy and Public Policy at Food Lifeline. 
And in this capacity, I think, as I mentioned, well, actually, I count by legislative sessions. Since I do government relations and advocacy work, I'm entering, right, we're right in the middle, of our, not the middle, the beginning of it right now, uh, my seventh state legislative session with Food Lifeline and Hunger Relief work. Prior the, to that, I worked for 18 years in cancer advocacy, uh, mm -hmm. all doing government relations and advocacy work, first in Florida for 10 years, and then I moved out to Seattle to be the vice president of government relations for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And then I spent three years at the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society where I oversaw uh, patient advocacy uh, and the incorporation of grassroots and legislative advocacy in that organization before finally landing at Food Lifeline. Uh, so all of my time has been trying to uh, win real improvements in people's lives. And the interesting thing I'll note with regard to my career, now that I'm in hunger relief, after working in cancer, I think the hunger relief work might actually be a little more complicated than cancer, which you would maybe think that uh, cancer is a pretty tough issue to work on, but there are many reasons for why uh, I think this is maybe a little more complicated. I also wanna say uh, uh, just a little note on the front end too, and that is, I know that you would get a better presentation out of me if you stop me and ask questions or um, at some point, I'm going to stop and ask you questions because I'm curious to know more about uh, your interests and, and what we may hope to accomplish together. Um, and then, and, and then because I do I work in politics, I'm kind of curious to know where you're from and, and any relationships that you might have with, with elected officials. Um, some of the reasons why, you know, today is so important is that we are in the beginning of a state legislative session, and a very important and consequential one. Um, it's also the case that we're moving into a new Congress and we have an important, we have some important federal policy uh, before us, all things that we hope to influence. Um, so I know, and it's great actually, I think it's a, it's a benefit. I know we're, this is being recorded, but I see we have uh, Francie, Mary, and then an iPhone person on but if I could get it just to uh, hear from each of you where you're who, who you are where you're, you're you're from maybe your place and an organization and um, and maybe anything that you want to share about uh, hunger work that you are doing connected to or maybe you know want to do that will help me as when I talk through uh, the 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 two issue, two issues I want to cover. So um, to make it easy, I want to maybe start. I see Mary on the line. Mary, if you do, would you mind introducing yourself? Uh, Mary Mackey. I live in Spokane, Washington. Oh, great. And I heard this uh, about this. Well, I've gone to other um, years of this meeting, but um, I okay. heard about this one through the fig tree. And so I'm involved in doing some editing right. for the fig tree. Great. Thank you, Mary. And then Francie? Uh, I'm from Pullman. I've uh, been living in Pullman, uh, seems like 30 years now, uh, from the Midwest originally. Um, I, I, I work with a social justice ministry at our, at our church and uh, have done things with food bank and you know before I used to volunteer there until they you know COVID and you couldn't do that and I did that for a long mm -hmm. time we also mm -hmm. you know contact uh, the Cougar Pantry which is the food bank on campus which you, you know Washington State is here and mm -hmm. um, the, the the family promise and the community um, action center which is has a major food bank and we, we we have food drives and as well, you know, it, you know directly at, at um, grocery stores, uh, not so much lately, but in the past and, and now have food drives um, in the church, you know, like we have lists of things and people bring phenomenal amounts of food to the church and then take it to those right. things. So, 
Um, Wonderful to hear that. On justice mostly is what we're trying to do. And um, okay. you know, and this is the aspect I think you're gonna be talking about is the justice aspects of yeah. you know, yeah. I have a definite yes. concern about the uh, SNAP and the fact that every time that the government uh, is going to increase, or going to have a vote on food, food, uh, what is food, food stamps, uh, or well, I don't know what they're not called that anymore, but they seem to cut that budget, and I mm. just irritates me to high heaven. So yeah, okay. Great. Thank you for sharing that, Francie. You're a real true food banker. Really happy to have you here. And then I don't know the name of the iPhone I'm seeing. So if you haven't introduced yourself and you're not me or Kathy, would you mind? Or maybe that's that somebody. Maybe that's a backup of some kind. Where, um, okay, so I'll proceed. And uh, then... uh, can you hear me? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Sure. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, we're in a, my name is Catherine Ferguson. I'm here with about four other people from oh, the great. CDC. And uh, we're part of the conference. And I presume we're here because we're interested in seeing, uh, hearing what you're working on. on, on uh, yes. Food security. Um, yes. But uh, I don't know what else uh, to say. I also work for the Fig Tree. I do some writing and some editing. So it's my task today to try and do a summary of some of the points that okay. you're going to share with us. Great. Okay. So you're the conference room. All right, we're all together, well, we're all connected. It's about the size of a small classroom and we have about four or five people here, that's all. Okay, no, that's fine, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Very good, that helps me. Thank you very much, Catherine and others. Um, so the two things that I propose to cover, and I think this would be most everything, um, other than things that you want to introduce and uh, but let me start by saying that first and foremost, an overview of state and federal policy, key players, strategies and grassroots needed to end hunger by 2030. And I mentioned 2030 specifically because there are now uh, multiple goals for ending hunger by the year 2030. Not only goals, but there are plans for that. And I will submit that should be a fairly significant influence on any work that we do decide to do together or independently so as to be in concert with others who are would be working toward that end. The second area is an exploration of key takeaways to achieve greater alignment and focus within the issue advocacy that we all do across the social safety net. And I mentioned that uh, with the assumption that already you're doing work to improve the human condition. You're doing things to try to improve um, uh, community and um, and, the, and the people around you. And that um, essentially, I think because of the hunger problem is, is such a complex problem and, and intersects with a lot of other issues, mm -hmm. I think that it's really important incumbent on us to look for ways so where we can just find alignment and focus within the various things that we're doing so as to reinforce um, what it is we're trying to accomplish and so that i'm involved in politics and advocacy i'm always looking for ways to leverage influence to make sure that we have opportunities to amplify the messages that we want key elected leaders to hear and that we're um, helping each other in various ways uh, to enhance our influence. Um, I'm very encouraged uh, at this point in time. I think I may have hinted to that in the beginning, uh, just because even though around us we see really difficult problems, I do believe strongly that there's incredible opportunity. And there are some things that are happening right now that are just 
I would have to say are almost like firsts and and that gives us a platform to from which to do our work that uh, that may not have existed in the past. And I'll start with, um, I think it's probably appropriate thinking about hunger from the federal perspective. Um, and, and, and why I say we're in a unique position and why 2030 is pretty important because uh, you may have saw in the news or know that uh, last September, the White House convened a national summit on hunger, health and nutrition. That is a summit that was held 50 years ago. Um, and so it had an impact back then in influencing national hunger policy. It's a shame that it took 50 years to reconvene, but the good news is, is it happened. And out of that, uh, the Biden-Harris administration outlined a strategy for ending hunger by the year 2030. I'm a pretty big believer in the philosophy of planning your work and then working your plan. This puts us in a place where we can we have a plan to work. My assessment of the national strategy is that if we are successful at accomplishing the things that it lays out, we can in fact see a dramatic decrease in hunger. Perhaps ending hunger entirely is is, is uh, would not be accomplished by that point in time, but the plan does include all the important things that we know uh, that have been proven effective that either just need to be done more of or better in order to get to the goal. Um, as maybe most of you know, hunger at the federal level or national level is uh, maybe first and foremost, um, addressed through the, the program SNAP and food stamps is still a term that can be used to describe uh, uh, SNAP. SNAP is a supplemental nutrition assistance program. Um, so it is the evolution of the of food stamps. The important thing to know about SNAP is, is it is extraordinarily important. It is the nation's first line of defense against hunger. It is the uh, program that puts a food benefit in the pocketbooks of many, many millions of Americans. And those benefits are allowed to be used at grocery stores or other local stores in people's community. I think one thing that is significant to say about SNAP in comparison to the charitable hunger relief system, I'll use this to give you an idea of the scale and, and to reinforce how important SNAP is. Feeding America's national network of food banks is quite large. There are 200 food banks across the country that are like Second Harvest and like Food Lifeline. In addition to that, there are 60,000 food pantries all across the United States, many of like the ones that you may be familiar with. Even with that, such with, with such a large network like that, for every one meal that the charitable hunger relief system provides, SNAP provides the equivalent of about nine. So it really is the nation's leading defense against hunger. And, and so it warrants uh, a lot of attention and our effort to improve that program so that it's truly meeting families' needs. Um, another reason that our conversation today is so important is because we're entering the period of time for which SNAP policy is able to be uh, shaped. Uh, SNAP is one of the major components of the Farm Bill and a Farm Bill must be passed by Congress uh, this year, 2023. It's due up for reauthorization. And that means that starting now, it's actually already begun, but starting now, uh, our federal lawmakers will be considering uh, changes to SNAP. Um, there will be um, some who want to see SNAP improved and uh, made more robust. There are some who will say that it is too generous and needs to be um, reduced. So that is kind of the 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 uh, the state of play with regard to the advocacy that happens needs to happen. 
and it's uh, we're at the point now where it's time it'd be important to uh, make sure that any of your federal representatives know how uh, important you feel SNAP is uh, to addressing hunger in your community and encouraging them to take a strong uh, position uh, to improve and expand SNAP. And when I say improve and expand, uh, there is room to make the SNAP uh, benefits more robust, more reflective of a family's needs. There is opportunity to improve the program so it's more accessible to people who who uh, may qualify and need to apply. And there are populations uh, that uh, need more assistance to gain greater access to the program. And I'm thinking specifically of uh, youth, uh, maybe in college or just youth in general, seniors as a population, and also um, those of immigration uh, status or in, in immigrant communities may not have uh, achieved, um, you know, a significant level of access to the SNAP, SNAP benefits. So there, there is work to do to to expand and improve SNAP, and that has to be done. There's also important work to do to make sure that the program that we have today is protected from any any threats. So uh, there are other federal programs that are important, uh, and and that and that fit in people's lives. We have uh, WIC is an example of a of an additional federal nutrition program. Um, there is a commodity supplemental food program. I think that's the, how, the what the initials stand for. It's a food box program kind of specifically designed for seniors. And there's also the, um, the entire spectrum of child nutrition uh, programs. And here we're fortunate in watch, Washington State to have the leadership of Senator Patty Murray, who just recently delivered a very significant victory for child nutrition programs by instituting, by creating a summer EBT program, which is essentially uh, a way to address the school meal um, uh, problem for uh, during summer times or when schools are are not in classroom. And we experienced that during the pandemic. Um, recently, Congress uh, was, uh, uh, was able to uh, create now what is a permanent program to address uh, summer meals. And we have to thank Patty Murray for that. So um, it's for the benefit of time, and, and I should maybe have said for your benefit, in particular, if you were taking notes in various parts of this, I can, after the fact, uh, send an email link to, I guess, maybe Catherine uh, or Mary even at Fig Tree with a, a list of uh, links to the various resources I'll point to. I'd like to point you to the, Wash the White House National Strategy on Hunger, Nutrition, and Health for what it outlines, which is essentially a whole of government approach to addressing uh, the, the goal of ending hunger. And within that, um, it will illuminate the various federal programs that are um, that have a role or a, an ability to impact how hunger is addressed in this country. I think it's very important and critical to talk right now about state policy because the state Washington state legislature is in session. And I'm happy to know that we have some uh, folks from Spokane and Pullman because very specifically and directly there are issues that are being uh, considered at the state level that have implications either for your the communities you're serving or because of uh, the legislators who uh, who herald from where you're from. So um, each year Food Lifeline uh, develops a state advocacy agenda and that is where we outline the various advocacy priorities that we want the legislature to con uh, consider. Um, we look at uh, food banking issues, of course, uh, but we also look at a spectrum of other issues organized and guided by a public policy platform, um, which I would, I, I, I heard mention of social justice, and I should say, to be fair, from the, um, that we very, at Food Lifeline, very much recognize that we're not going to food bank our way out of hunger. It's important to address root causes of, of hunger 
And so we've outlined a public policy platform, and this is something I can also link you to. This would be found on our website as well. It outlines a strategy where we decide we want to have influence on issues, policy, public policy issues that address equity and social justice, because we know that systemic racism and social injustice are social determinants of hunger. And we uh, want to advance policies that remedy those, those unjust systems. We also have a policy platform area uh, centered on poverty issues, um, as well as hunger, health, and well being. A nutrition assistance is another area, and that speaks specifically to government nutrition assistance programs. We also focus on food systems. Uh, food systems are important to making sure that Washington's communities have uh, access to an abundant uh, supply of, of, of fresh produce and other culturally desired foods that their communities would like. And we're also very interested in tax policy. Um, Right now in Washington state, we live in the most regressive, uh, under the most regressive tax code in the entire country. That means that uh, working poor and low uh, mid income families are paying up to six times their share of income in state and local taxes as compared to wealthy. And if we are truly going to address hunger, we've got to address poverty. And if we're going to address poverty, we've got to address uh, an unjust and regressive tax code. I'm going to give you examples of policies we're pursuing in each of these areas and present that it is sort of the collection of these issues that I think will uh, not only impact positively people in their in their situation as it regards to their food security, uh, but every other part of uh, their lives where we desire stability, whether it be housing, in education, or in work. Um, every aspect of, of people's lives are, is, is influenced by these things. And so, um, again, mentioning why uh, Spokane is so important and, and, and Pullman as well. Um, I guess I'll just kind of start there. Um, this legislative session actually starting uh, Monday, uh, this coming Monday and Tuesday, uh, two bills will be introduced first in the Senate and the second in the House that would, um, would provide, if successful, these bills would, would pass, that this law would pass and it would provide free school meals for every student, every day, every meal. This is a uh, uh, this is a, a policy uh, uh, ambition that is is outlined in the White House National Strategy, and I should also have pointed out that Feeding America similarly has a series of recommendations for ending hunger by 2030. And I should just mention that there's there's a close symmetry between the White House strategy and Feeding America's strategy. And that's what gives me the confidence to, to talk to you today and say we really do have plans for ending hunger. It's just now a matter of acting on those plans and making sure that we're making progress to accomplishing them. The school meal bills, uh, the House version is sponsored by uh, Representative Marcus Riccelli, a terrific hunger champion in the Washington State Legislature. He's been active on, and you may know this already, um, active on school meal uh, policy for a number of years in his legislative career. He was instrumental in passing bills to expand the number of schools to take advantage of a federal program so that more of the school meals are in fact able to be provided to, to, uh, to families at no student cost. So the, the culmination of this work would be passing the school meal bills so that uh, we take that burden off of, of, of low and mid-income mid families. The other important um, policy that has implication with regards to students or youth is a uh, policy for uh, creating a hunger-free campus designation. So a college campus or a, a community college or technical college uh, would have a 
series of benchmarks to achieve to re to to receive this uh, hunger free designation and the com and the support to get there. Uh, and this is a, a the impetus for this is not only to to help in and hunger, but also other basic needs that college students may, may, may need. This would create that wraparound support system so that they would have navigation or help to get to the benefits that they, they deserve. So we're pretty excited about those two nutrition assistance. Um, uh, that's our public policy platform category. Those two bills that fall in that area. Uh, one other area that we also have a great amount of interest and I know Second Harvest has been very active in and that is around military family hunger. I should say military and veteran family hunger. Uh, there's a few bills uh, being addressed this session that will uh, speak to that issue. I see we're at 2.40, so I want to spend another 10 minutes just kind of touching base on some of these other policies because I would need to spend time uh, to talk to you about how you can influence the outcome of these various policies and the ways that you can do that and specifically learn from you if you have relationships with lawmakers. Uh, and then I can also explain how, how the process of, of getting involved and making your voice heard is now easier than ever. So there's another uh, Aaron, to address. Yes. Aaron, I just wanna be sure that you know that we need to go back to the main session at 2.50. Okay. So yes. there's really only about 10 Hard minutes. stop. Very good. <laughs> Hard stop. Okay, then I can do this in, in five minutes. Thank you for that, Mary. Uh, equity Under our equity and social justice platform, we're looking at issues that affect communities uh, in the, specifically around racial equity. And we have a number of, um, of, of bills that we're tracking in that area. We have a partnership actually I should say a membership with the Washington Coalition for Place Accountability that's guiding a lot of that. So it addresses uh, public safety, but there's also voting rights. I hope what you take from this is that um, it really, and I guess this is true for any of the issues that we have interest in, and it takes, it's, you know, it's hard to say, you, you just couldn't write a bill that will end racism or write a bill that will end hunger. You've got many, a myriad of issues that are, you know, complementary that need to be worked on to make all the necessary fixes. And so, um, I, I, so that's why, you know, you might on one, on one hand see our, po our policy agenda and say, wow, that's, you know, you're kind of all over the place. But the point is you kind of have to be. So another area I want to address is poverty. And I mentioned we live in the state with the most regressive tax code. Our interest this session is that we would see a basic income pilot enacted this is uh, the guaranteed basic income is a proven concept, and there is a pilot in Pierce County. We want to uh, do a pilot in, in Washington State, a more expansive pilot to test this as a more effective uh, poverty intervention than, than measures that have been happening now. Um, under the, uh, you know, um, under, and then kind of somewhat related under tax policy, uh, we would like to see a wealth tax passed. Uh, again, the wealthy are not paying their share, and so a wealth tax would address us. Uh, this is a tax, though, that would be aimed at extreme wealth. And so this is for the, the multimillionaires and billionaires who have financial assets held in, in, in like stocks and bonds, and, 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 um, and they're worth of, of over like $250 million before any tax would be assessed. But only just a 1% levy on this extreme wealth and again think of uh, wealth created through stocks and bonds so it's it's not their main source of wealth but even a one percent levy on this wealth would generate uh, the estimate is over three to four billion dollars annually in new revenue for washington so many of the community concerns that you have would easily be accommodated if uh, this new tax uh, could be passed. Not only does it start to seek more balance in our tax code, um, we also were instrumental in passing a working families tax credit. This is something else to address the inequity in the tax code. This is a tax credit for low and mid-income working families that returns to them anywhere from three to $1,200 of uh, taxes that they've paid uh, that again, uh, I would submit unfairly. Uh, so the, uh, 
the policy this legislative session is to expand that working families tax credit to include more people. Right now it starts at age 25. We wanna see it start with people uh, at age 18. So an expansion of that policy. <clears throat> and then um, lastly, I wanna point attention to the, to the food banking aspects of the, the work that needs to happen today, right now to meet the emergency food insecurity needs that people in the state are experiencing. It saddens me to say that right now we're experiencing statewide levels of hunger uh, similar to that during the peak of the pandemic. Hmm. When the child tax credit at the federal level expired, when the pandemic free school meal program expired, and when inflation kicked in, families that had just gotten back on their feet were suddenly knocked down again. Um, on top of that, um, within, let's say, beginning in March, a SNAP, er, uh, an emergency allotment, so a, a boost to SNAP benefit is also going to expire. And that's going to cut about $70 million a month in food benefit from SNAP beneficiaries in the state, further exasperating the hunger problem. This is being met at a time when food banks have, uh, I would say, pr pr probably historically low inventories. Um, I've heard in, at our warehouse, our inventory is down 75%. Northwest Harvest's inventory is down 80%. So we're struggling, food banks are struggling with really, really high need and very, very low inventory. This is why we go to the Washington State Legislature and we're asking for money for um, a program called We Feed Washington, which essentially uh, purchases Washington grown produce and gets them shipped in boxes to be put, uh, distributed throughout the hunger relief system. There's a second uh, state program that's also operated by the Washington State Department of Agriculture called the Emergency Food Assistance Program. And this too puts money into the hunger relief system, uh, allowing food banks and food pantries uh, not only to uh, purchase additional food and other related items, uh, but also equipment to improve you know, the food pantry, you know, should they need that, or even staffing if that's necessary. Those two asks of the legislature, they were both represented in the governor's budget, and they total about $115 million for the biennium, so that's over a two-year period. Uh, we see in Washington a need for the legislature to do even more because of the emergency and dire situation I just described. Now, let me just kind of, so I don't run out of time, kind of jump to the important part of that is you being involved in the process. Um, right now, the Washington legislature is, is back in session. It's a hybrid session. That means that uh, they accommodate both in-person attendance as well as virtual and online. Uh, the bills that I mentioned, for instance, the school meal bills, those are being heard starting Monday and Tuesday. You can go online to the Washington State Legislature's website and sign in uh, in support of those bills. So that is meaning you can register your name, your organization. Um, you can do it as a person, uh, as an individual or as an organization and note your uh, support or opposition to any bill. Hopefully in the school meal case, it's support. At the very same site, you can uh, submit written testimony. At the very same place, you could sign up to give a uh, an in-person or virtual testimony uh, at a public hearing if that, if you choose. Right now, uh, because of the of the ad for the advocacy that we're doing, we're encouraging as many people as possible to sign in pro on 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 those and then the other bills which I can supply as a, as a list and and can share links as well. Um, so really it is a matter of just as a click of a button, being able to um, register your support, your individual support for important policy that you wanna see passed. And this is true for every, every single bill that the legislature will consider. Now, mm -hmm. I think also very, very important is if you have a, um, if, you, if you have a relationship with the 
with your representatives, it's important to communicate uh, to them so that they know that their constituents and because of what you do, because of your, um, how you serve in your community, um, I think your story uh, would, would carry a lot of weight. That means um, sending, uh, directly sending, uh, if, it, if it's Representative Marcus Riccelli, it would be a perfect example of sending him an email, uh, making sure that he knows how important it is um, or that you have that he has your support because he's the sponsor of the bill and so he doesn't need to be convinced this is an important policy he's putting uh, everything on the line to do this he needs to know that people in his community are supporting him um, really really important that's a it's a pretty expensive proposition it's about a 76 million dollar a year uh, appropriation required to provide school free school meals for for students across the state but it is arguably one of the most critical uh, hunger interventions a state could endeavor. So really, really important. And of course, you know, Aaron, visibility. I'm sorry, but yep. we're gonna say Two. thank you. I thank do you see your time. So much, and we're gonna have to go. I okay. <laughs> I'm happy to have had this time and I and I can promise you a, a follow-up email with uh, links and other information that was discussed. Yes. Thank you.